Hi, so as you probably all know, Cubase contains a lot of features. It might be one of the reasons why you're watching this channel, because I sometimes really dive deep into some of the Cubase features that you may not know already. However, one feature that I bet all of you have seen already is the Cubase Hub, which is the big window that opens up when you first start Cubase, allows you to select a recent project, etc. But there's actually quite a bit more to it than just opening projects. So let's do a deep dive into the Cubase Hub and let's go. Now, if you're a Cubase user, you will immediately recognize this window because it's the window that gets displayed when you start up Cubase and when you close a project in Cubase, it also goes back to this window, which is called the Cubase Hub. Now, apart from this window showing when you start up Cubase, you can also show it when you have Cubase running. And if you now still want to show the Cubase Hub, you can do so either via File, New Project. It will then also display the Hub. But maybe easier to find, you can also go to the menu over here, Hub, Open Hub, and again, you get the Cubase Hub. So this Cubase Hub basically has two sections. On the left side, you have the section which really only works if you're connected to the internet because it gets the latest news about Cubase. It has various links to web pages down here, which we will look at in more detail in a minute. And on the right side over here, you have the project creation and project opening section. Now there is actually a possibility to get rid of that left side of the Cubase hub. And you can do that via edit preferences, edit preferences, and then in the general section over here, you have an option to show news in hub. If you turn that off and you open the hub again, you see that it opens up with only the project creation and project opening section. And the whole left side, which requires the internet, is disabled. But let's have a look at the full hub again. So what are we seeing here? Well, on the left side, you have the news section, which basically gets the latest news about Cubase from the internet. For example, there was a maintenance update released over here. You can learn more about Cubase. There's a specific section here about the new feature in Cubase 14, which is the modulator. So if you click that, for example, it opens a web page, which allows you to explore the new modulators in Cubase 14 by watching a video. And if you open, for example, this news item, it will again open a web page. And in this case, with the Cubase 14 32 release notes. Now you also have some links down here. For example, you can check out whether there are any deals on Cubase related items at Steinberg. And at the moment you can see that there are no promotions running on their site at this moment. But at some other point, they may be running deals on Cubase or Wavelab or any of their other products. And you can keep an eye on that via this link. There's also a learn section which opens a link to the web page with tutorials. There are written tutorials as well as video tutorials. Now, if you want to check out the manual of Cubase, you can go over here, user manuals. And as you can see over here, you can search in the manuals and there are many links over here. For example, this one links to the Cubase 14 Pro online manual. Another link over here navigates to the Steinberg forums. So if you want to ask a question about Cubase, see whether other users can help you or whether somebody already came up with the same question as you did, you can check out the forums. And finally, there's a link to the support side as well, which allows you to contact support if you have an issue. Check out the downloads, again, user manuals, forums, videos, and there are some recommended articles and some of the latest articles on the support side. Now, so much for the news and the internet link section on the left side of the Cubase hub. Now on the right side, you can find everything related to opening and creating Cubase projects. As you can see over here, there's a list of Cubase projects, which are the latest Cubase projects that I opened. And if I click on one of those items, you can see that the button over here, which just said create empty, let me deselect this one again. You see that it says create empty. If I select one of these projects, this button turns into open. And if I click this now, it would open this project. What you can also do is double click on this entry and then it would also open this project. Now, if you don't want to have a certain project in this list anymore, you can also right click on it and say remove from list. So the actual project is not actually removed, but it stays on your hard disk, but it is just removed from this list of recent projects. You can also rename a project here, delete the project and show it in the Explorer. For example, this is one of the projects of my band The Wash that I apparently opened recently. And then you can see exactly where it is on your hard disk. And if you want to open a project which you did not open recently or you don't want to find it in this list over here, you can also just click open other over here. And then you get a file browser and you can basically just navigate to whatever project you want to open. Select the project and click open over here. 
Now this right section also allows you to create new projects. For example, if I don't have anything selected on this list, you have the create empty option over here, which basically creates an empty project for you. And as you can see, there are many other templates over here as well that you can use to create a project. So you can select the template and then click create and it will create a project based on that new template or you can double click the template and it will do the same. And Cubase comes with a number of standard templates, but over here you can see that I have some Lanewood Studio templates in here. So I added them myself. So if you, for example, have a project that you want to save as a template, let's take this one. It's empty, but okay. You can choose file, save as template. And then over here, you can type a name of your template. You can even specify in which template category you want to have it listed, save it, and it's available for creating a new project whenever you want to. Now, I will not dive deep into creating templates because we're talking about the Cubase hub over here. So let's get back to that. And for these templates as well, by the way, you can also right click and remove them from the list or show in the Explorer so you know where they are located on your hard disk. So you know, for example, which directory to back up if you want to make sure that you don't lose your templates. Now down below here, you have a number of options here when you're creating a new project based on a template or an empty project. But before we dive into that, if you like this video or find it useful at all, please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm so that it gets shown to more people. Subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I publish another video. If you're really enjoying my content, you can also consider using the super thanks button below the video, which is sort of a virtual tip jar. Or maybe even better, if you're planning to buy anything at one of these online stores, I have affiliate links to these stores in the description below. And if you click a link to one of these stores and buy anything at that store, I'll get a small commission without any additional cost to you, which is always highly appreciated and keeps this channel going. But let's get back to the Cubase hub. Now this section over here basically determines how the hub behaves when you want to create a new project. I usually have it set for prompt for project location and that basically means that if I create a new project, Cubase wants to know where my project folder is, which is basically the location where all the project related files will be saved. So let's imagine I wanted to create a new project for a song of my band The Wash, made this year, then I could create over here a new project folder, song three, select that folder, and I now have a new project called Untitled 2. But if I open the pool, for example, you can see that the project folder is the folder that I just selected. So if I now start recording stuff for this project, it would be in the audio folder of this project. And by the way, if you want to know how Cubase does any file handling in more detail, I have a separate video about that, which I'll link in the description, and you can check it out after this video. Now, the other option that the hub offers is that you can say use default location. And you can see over here that I have specified a folder, dcubase data, which is actually the folder that contains a lot of my Cubase projects. So if you then push create empty, it would not prompt for the project location, but it would actually assume that you wanted to create a project under this folder with the title that you can specify over here. If you don't specify anything, it will just create a new project in the folder untitled 01. So let's do that. And if you now open the pool, you can see that there's a project D Cubase data untitled 01, which is now used for any files related to this project. For example, the project file, but also the recorded audio files. Now you may wonder why do you not always this option? Because it's one less step, right? You don't have to actually select the folder for your project data. You don't have to manually create it. It does that automatically for you, or it does it with the file name that you specify. And the reason is that my project directory has actually multiple layers. So if you look at my dcubase data folder, you can see that there's actually a lot of projects directly in here, but a lot of projects are also not directly in here. For example, for my band wash, I have folders under here with songs that we created in every year. So if I want to create a new project for my band, I would need to select the right folder, cubase data wash 2025, and then actually create the folder for the data of the project in here, like you saw me do for that song three for example. But if you have a less complicated setup, you might as well just use the default location. And I would suggest that you specify the name of the song over here, for example, song four, click create. And you can see that we now have a folder, D Cubase data song four. And if I want to save the project file, you can see that it's also in this folder. So for example, I could save the project file over here, maybe also named song four. So did you know all of this about the Cubase Hub already? How are you using it exactly? 
Let us know in the comments. I'm very curious about that. And maybe we can learn something from each other. Now, if you want to dive more into the details of file handling by Cubase, for example, what happens when you record audio, where can you find the files? How can you move those files if they were in the wrong location? I have a separate video about that, which I will link over here. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.